Peter here as we start recording. Um, fantastic. Uh, so uh, Peter here, his work focuses uh, on the impacts of information technology in business and society, uh, specifically about the fourth uh, revolution. Um, he is the author and instructor at WASPI Digital Transformation Program and provides guidance to organizations on how they can effectively apply digital transformation. He is a lecturer in the Department of Management Sciences uh, in the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Waterloo, where he teaches courses in the impact of information technology in society, strategic management of technology, project management, technology innovation and entrepreneurship, the operations and supply chain management, and materials for these courses are available freely online. Um, I love to see that in the digital age and see the, the sharing of resources for individuals who are truly interested. Uh, and with that, Peter, I'll pass it off to you and uh, look forward to hearing our discussions. Thank you, Matt, and uh, welcome everyone to the presentation. Uh, I hope that wherever you are, uh, you're safe and healthy today. We're moving in, uh, into a world, we've moved into a world over the past few years uh, that is a lot more uncertain, I think, than it, than it was a few short years ago. Uh, one of the major factors in that uncertainty, uh, of course, is technology. And, and, and that is probably why most of you are here today. You have a degree uh, of uncertainty uh, about the future as far as your organization may be concerned, uh, but also as an individual about, uh, you know, what your career might mean, uh, how your family may develop, what the world might look like in, 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 in the not too distant future. Uh, we're going to talk about that today inside the presentation that I've uh, got prepared, which I'm going to just put on your screen now. You should be able to see that, I think. I'll just... Yes, yeah, there we are. There's uh, presentation mode, and then we're good to yeah. go. There we go. Uh, so so I do have a presentation today that I'm going to take you through. Uh, but I do understand that uh, you, most that there are many uh, motivations for attending the presentation today. Uh, I'm going to talk about the digital transformation program that I... Uh, wrote and deliver from the University of Waterloo. But I'm also going to talk more broadly about digital transformation itself. So I understand that some of you are interested in the program. Uh, others are interested in the idea of digital transformation more broadly, while others are coming to this presentation from the point of view uh, of what we're doing with technology as far as the delivery uh, of education programs is concerned. So I've tried to cater for all of those audiences, uh, how effectively you can judge by the end of the presentation. Uh, but that's what I've tried to do with the presentation that I've got today. So there are four main areas that I'm gonna cover. Uh, the first is this concept of the fourth industrial revolution. I think it's really important to start here uh, as we consider uh, digital transformation and organizations. We're going through a period of massive change uh, inside society that all of you will have seen uh, in many areas of your life. Uh, and I really want to uh, assist the understanding of that as the foundation for what we call digital transformation. So I'll talk about what it is uh, many people ask this question as to what it what it really means. And I'll also talk about the challenges. We've done work at Waterloo on uh, the uh, challenges that are faced by organizations. Uh, many of you may be facing some of these challenges. So I'm going to talk about those. And then I'm going to talk about how we address these with our uh, online certificate program. Uh, that uh, runs again uh, in the fall, uh, and which, of course, you're welcome to apply for. As I proceed through the presentation, if you do have any questions, please, uh, you, know, you can add those to the chat box. You can switch on your microphone and talk uh, or intervene in whichever way you wish. Uh, I'll be happy to chat further about the things that, we, that are included here. Uh, but I thought I would start with the fourth industrial revolution. This is I think uh, the best 
uh, uh, description of the way the world uh, is today as being influenced by technology. Uh, this uh, The World Economic Forum has coined this term, the fourth industrial revolution, of course, uh, putting on a par uh, what is happening now with the first and, as they've described, sec second and third industrial revolutions, periods in time that of massive change inside individual countries uh, and inside the world itself. Uh, I'm not going to read this whole quote. It is a bit long for a slide, uh, but it but the areas that are highlighted in yellow, I think, draw attention to the significance uh, and the impact of the changes that we're seeing, inspired largely by technology today. Uh, the first of these yellow sections, the speed, breadth, and depth of this revolution is forcing us to rethink how countries develop, how organizations create value, and even what it means to be human. And uh, we can consider that point uh, if you wish, but certainly just the ways that people are altering their appearances uh, in, uh, as, a, a result, as a result of their use of social media is one very obvious example of how technology is causing people to think about who they are. Uh, the second quote, the real opportunity is to look beyond technology and find ways to give the greatest number of people the ability to positively impact their families, organizations, and communities, uh, of, of course, is very important. How can we ensure that technology has a positive impact and not a negative one, which you know, uh, the uh, uh, common perception of technology at the moment it's not always been like this, but the common perception today is one of some apprehension, particularly around artificial intelligence. And of course, that is something that we can talk today about too. This slide uh, uh, I created to help us consider the impact of the fourth industrial revolution. And it's worth taking a minute or two, not very much longer than that. I've got a lot of other things to talk about today, uh, but just to consider the impact that the first industrial revolution had and to compare that to the impact that the fourth industrial revolution is having today. And we can really do that you know, without a long history lesson. Uh, in the first industrial revolution, uh, in the form of politics which existed at that time was, you know, we had uh, we had kings and queens, we had parliaments that were created by landowners. Uh, that was the form of government in Britain where the Industrial Revolution started. And by the end of the Industrial Revolution, we had seen the birth of democracy. So the form of government was changed fundamentally by the first Industrial Revolution. Uh, the second slide here, uh, I think I can indicate it with my mouse, shows a bunch of ships. Uh, at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, there was very little trade between countries. There was some trade, but not very much. By the end of the Industrial Revolution, free trade uh, with a lot of trade between countries uh, was uh, established or the framework for that was already established. During the Industrial Revolution, we saw uh, a wide extremes of wealth. We, we had large amounts of poverty, uh, but, and also uh, some people who were very, very rich. People moved from the countryside into cities. Cities like Manchester in England grew tenfold. Uh, the countryside became depopulated. Uh, before the Industrial Revolution, most people lived in the country. After it, most people lived uh, in cities. The forms of families changed. Families lived all toge together in the country. Uh, before the Industrial Revolution, they saw each other quite frequently. They worked in fields that were beside their houses. After the Industrial Revolution, uh, women stayed at home to some degree to look after children where they could afford to do this, and men went out to work away from the family home. The family unit changed as a result of the Industrial Revolution. 
fast forward to today, uh, we see questions about the future of democracy. Is democracy going to exist at all, or at least in the same form it's got today? Free trade is being questioned. Protectionism is growing. Uh, discontent is growing inside uh, cities. We see demonstrators in this slide. The form of work is changing. People are working at home more than they did before. We have a question over the extent, the way that skills will develop in the future. Uh, are we going to see a large number of very unskilled people and a small number of professional, highly paid people? What form will that take? Retail, as the Shopify uh, picture shows, is uh, also changing uh, the, the world of, uh, of, of shopping. So uh, the world is changing very, very quickly. This is reflected in what Oliver Dowden said a couple of weeks ago. He's the deputy prime minister in the UK. Uh, and this quote really illustrates that the sense that the world is changing is becoming more and more accepted uh, uh, every day. Uh, this quote basically says, this is a total revolution that is coming. It's totally transforming almost all elements of life uh, over the coming years. Uh, and he says that it's much faster than other revolutions, much more extensive uh, than the industrial revolution itself. So if you needed evidence or if you needed an argument that uh, digital transformation was necessary, that is intended to provide that foundation. So I said I would answer the question, what is digital transformation? Uh, and my answer to that question is here, it is the response that organizations are making to the fourth industrial revolution, usually involving technological change, but always with human and organizational change. So the fourth industrial revolution is impacting all of us. We are all responding to that in one way or another. Uh, sometimes that will mean that we respond with things we do with technology ourselves. But at the same time, even if we're not using technology, we are still impacted and still responding to the impact that technology is having on the world. So that is my digital transformation uh, definition. The technologies that are available to us uh, are illustrated by this slide. Uh, and this represents one of the uh, fundamental challenges that organizations face today. So the digital transformation program that we offer at the University of Waterloo is intended to help people and organizations navigate this new world. Uh, so it, it's intended to provide tools and techniques practical uh, solutions that will, uh, that will enable people to gain more confidence uh, and to address the challenges that the fourth industrial revolution brings. Uh, but the way that they do address these challenges is going to vary, uh, as I guess you would probably expect, uh, very widely from one organization to another. Uh, this morning, I was completing a paper, uh, a short document uh, that was looking at digital transformation in farming or is, is uh, considering uh, a session that we're looking at on that. Uh, what digital transformation means for farmers is going to be very different than, for example, the Canadian military, who I also spoke with. We had someone from the military in our last digital transformation uh, certificate program. Uh, and, and of course, what digital transformation for the military is very different from digital transformation for farmers. And for an individual organization, what this means uh, is that they look out at all the technologies that are available. We can see a lot of them here. And they consider which are the ones that are most important to me and how am I going to apply them? This slide shows the wide variety of ways in which organizations are 
focusing their digital transformation efforts. Uh, I'm not going to read all of the elements that are listed on the left-hand side of this slide, uh, but you can see that there are a wide range of ways that technology is being used in organizations. I like to refer to this as uh, in, in, in this, this, the way that organizations are viewing this as being similar to going into a restaurant which has a very large menu. Uh, and you pick up the menu and you look at it and you try to pick what you're going to eat. Uh, and that might take you, depends on the type of person you are maybe, but it might take you a very long time because you have such a wonderful choice. And that's the same uh, as position in some ways as organizations face with digital transformation. They have a wide range of possible technological solutions and a wide range of ways in which those can be applied. Uh, they can impact a range of areas that can be, impact the products and services they offer, what those products and services are. Uh, we see electric cars and technology enabled cars, uh, uh, self-driving cars and that type of thing as examples. It can change their processes through automation and robotics, can change their relationships with customers through the use of communications technologies uh, and data, can change their business model, it can change the fundamentals of what a business might do, can change their ecosystems, the organizations they're working with uh, as suppliers and distributors and and other elements of the network of organizations that come together to deliver uh, a, a product or service, uh, or many other areas. So it can mean a lot of things to different people. Uh, but it, can, it also uh, brings a host of opportunities. There are the technologies that are available can have very real benefits. And we've seen a lot of companies uh, move into very exciting areas and areas that are fundamentally changing those businesses. These are some headlines that reflect the areas, uh, some of the areas that technology is having an impact today. I couldn't resist including the, line, the, the headline at the bottom of the slide here, uh, Australia implored to learn from Canada's digital health success. I wanted to include that because in Canada, we often knock ourselves a little bit uh, about uh, our own ability to introduce technology, uh, uh, the speed at which we can do that compared to other countries. Uh, but there are many areas that we're, we're, we're not doing that badly. Uh, the challenges we face are ones that tend to be faced uh, in many other countries as well. Uh, but I wanted first to just emphasize that there are many opportunities that come from technology, uh, but there are also fundamental challenges. Uh, these statistics are recent uh, and they're very real and they are also very uh, sobering. Digital transformation, that's what DX means for those of you who may not be familiar with that uh, abbreviation. Uh, Digital transformation, according to Gartner, the big technology research company, uh, is a priority for 87% of businesses. So you know, organizations do realize that they need to respond as far as the fourth industrial revolution is concerned. And that's reflected in their spending. IDC, another technology research company, uh, say that global digital transformation spending uh, will reach $3.4 trillion in 2026. Uh, and uh, that certainly seems to reflect the realities that most of us see every day. Technology spending is rising very, very quickly. But Harvard Business Review, and this is just from September 2022, say that 70 to 95% of digital transformation efforts fail. Now, Matt at the beginning of our presentation said 70% fail, uh, and that is the number I have usually used. That comes from a McKinsey study that, uh, that looked at that. But I was 
rather worried when I saw the Harvard Business Review uh, 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 quote of 70 to 95%, because it, it certainly would seem to provide some evidence that things are not getting better. We are not getting better at it. And one of the concerns that I have today is that uh, this is not reflected, understandably so perhaps, in the messages that we have from technology vendors particularly about the impact and the uh, real challenges that exist with applying and using their products, their jobs to sell their products. That's perfectly understandable. Uh, it's something most companies are keen to do. But at the same time, the challenges that the real challenges, the reality uh, of technology and organizations is often very different than the images that we might see uh, uh, from the technology vendors. And I think it's very important to go into uh, digital transformation and the introduction of technology in organizations with our eyes open, uh, understanding the challenges we're going to face and being ready to address those. The headlines on this slide uh, illustrate the areas in which, uh, uh, the major areas, I guess, might be the right way to put it, uh, that organizations face in their uh, introduction of technology today. Uh, I've tried to reflect the work that we've done at Waterloo, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, but I think as you look at these headlines, these are very real headlines from real publications. Uh, they, they, they cover a wide range of areas that organizations uh, need to be aware of uh, as far as their own digital transformation activity might be concerned. In the top right corner, for example, you can see workforce resistance uh, to change emerges as a top challenge for successful digital transformation. Understandably, workers are fearful about the future. Uh, there are many reasons uh, for that. Their experience of past change, particularly, is, is, is a major factor probably there too. The tech skills gap, the headline to the left of the workforce resistance one, uh, tech skills uh, shortages, concerns about the development of skills within organizations is a major concern for most organizations. Legacy systems, uh, old systems, integrating those with new ones uh, is a problem for, for a lot of organizations in introducing new technologies. Uh, managers and their impact on digital transformation is another important area. Organizational innovation is something that has dramatically risen in importance to organizations today. And, uh, and, and many organizations are asking, uh, you know, how, how can they become more innovative? They understand that being innovative is important in digital transformation, uh, but they uh, have struggled to be able to achieve it. Regulation of AI, another area that is very important. Regulation generally, as far as technology is concerned, is important because if you're investing in technology and applying it in ways that may be subject to regulation in the future, this is a strategically important thing for, for, uh, for an organization that's doing that. We need to be aware of what the regulation might be. Culture, uh, always referred to uh, as an important area. Cybersecurity, uh, of course, important. Uh, and uh, integrating business, culture, organization, and the technology itself uh, is also critical. These headlines, well, just a minute, my slide is not changing here. There we go. Uh, uh, reflect our research. So I selected those headlines based on the research that we're, we've done at Waterloo. Uh, uh, this list of areas of challenge as far as digital transformation is concerned comes from uh, our review 
of about 60 uh, research reports uh, created, some by academics, some by uh, commercial research companies like Gartner and McKinsey and others. Uh, but we reviewed those to try to understand what the challenges were uh, as part of the work we were doing to uh, develop our own digital transformation program. Our job as academics uh, is really to help people uh, uh, be successful in the world, to try and make the world a better place. And by trying to, using our skills to develop understanding and share that understanding with others uh, around digital transformation is, is really what we've tried to do. So this, this list of areas uh, covers what we think are the main challenges. And these are what we have based the development of our digital transformation program on. Uh, those areas that we've identified, I may be flogging this a bit too much now, uh, but these areas uh, of uh, concern are reflected in the research data. So I selected some of the statistics that we've got on uh, what the challenges are. 62% see culture as an issue, 70% employee resistance, 79% legacy applications, 75% say that business functions compete with each other rather than collaborating. This gives us a number to say how big the problem is as far as silos in organizations are concerned. 75% of workers don't feel equipped to learn the digital skills that they need now. This is a shocking statistic. It, uh, I mean, all of these statistics, I think, given the future that we face, are extremely important. Uh, but this one in particular, 75% of workers don't feel they're able to learn the digital skills that they need. Uh, now, the term that's used here is equipped. And that what that might mean is that they don't think they'll ever be able to learn digital skills. I hope it doesn't mean that. Uh, but certainly it means that they don't think they can do it right now. Uh, and this is something which we urgently need to address, as, uh, of course, eCampus Ontario and the University of Waterloo are trying to do. 84% of executives think innovation is important, but only 6% are satisfied with their innovation performance. Uh, this and is another really important statistic, uh, but it is important. One of the reasons I think that it's important uh, is that it reflects the fact that the organizations, in spite of the fact that they have tried to become more innovative in recent years, most of them have not made very much success with that, uh, and largely because they were never designed in the first place to do this, to be innovative. They were designed to do the same thing reliably every day. And this statistic really illustrates how difficult it is to change from being a do the same thing every day organization to one which is uh, 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 radically changing on a regular basis, fundamental change. And these statistics tell us how hard that really is. 76% of global consumers believe companies need to do more to protect data privacy. So. Uh, I wanted to include that statistic, certainly very important in terms of the future of regulation. There are substantial public concerns about technology that need to be taken into account. Why is this important? Governments around the world are placing a large amount of emphasis on uh, digital transformation, supporting organizations in their countries, uh, to transform. Because they understand the uh, impact uh, that this will have on the lives of people within their countries. Because the question really is, which organizations will survive? Those countries that are more successful at getting their own organizations to prosper 
in an era of digital transformation and the fourth industrial revolution are the ones that are going to be more prosperous. Those are the countries that are going to have the higher standards of living in the future. Those that cannot adapt uh, to the new world are going to struggle, their standards of living are going to decline, and their futures are not going to be very good. Uh, and for individual companies, of course, this is also the case. Uh, those that are able to make these changes happen successfully uh, will be successful. Those that can't will not. So the Digital Transformation Certificate from the University of Waterloo is designed uh, in, to provide uh, individuals and organizations with the confidence to address the challenges that digital transformation poses. And as we designed this certificate, our objective was that people should be able and confident, I'm repeating myself, I know, but able and confident to do the things that we were introducing. Our objective is not simply to give people knowledge, it's to enable them to change their own organizations. Uh, and we've tried to design this to be able to do that. These are the topics that we cover inside the online certificate. First of all, uh, we begin with a discussion on the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, this is important in laying a framework that emphasizes the radical nature of the change that is required. Big changes are needed uh, in order to adapt to the world the, to the new world. Uh, and we really need to understand the extent to which the world is changing uh, to be able to uh, have the uh, 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 have the motivation uh, uh, and uh, to be able to address this challenge. Uh, next, we look at what might digital transformation mean for your organization? What are the different different possibilities? as far as digital transformation might be concerned, and how can you best understand those in terms of your organization? Third, we look at the new technologies themselves. Uh, we spend a week looking at what the main technologies are, how they might be applied, uh, and, and then we move into transformation in practice. Uh, I'm gonna show you elements of the program shortly, uh, but the uh, but we look uh, at organizations that have applied new technologies and what their experience has been. I was keen to get the reality of technological change reflected in the program itself. Uh, we then move into uh, a series of weeks, five, six, seven, and eight, uh, that look practically at what you can do uh, to make these things happen. So week five, creating your transformation vision. Uh, week six, the transformation roadmap, putting your vision into practice, uh, overcoming the all these challenges that we've identified in digital transformation. And then finally, uh, innovation and continuous improvement, continuing the process, the never ending process of digital transformation. Uh, the, this slide describes the areas that uh, uh, that you'll learn uh, as far as the program is concerned, uh, the impact that technology will have on your career, uh, the opportunities for your organization, the common challenges, the technical, human, and organizational aspects. We combine these in the program, uh, as, of course, is essential, understanding that technological change is just not not just about the technology. Uh, developing your own plan, your own roadmap uh, is part of the program, addressing the roadblocks with the challenges. Uh, continuous improvement in when we look at innovation and continuous improvement uh, and developing your skills in digital literacy to be able to contribute to this in your organization. The elements that we've included in the program that are important in terms of what we call the exp your experiential 
uh, engagement with the program. Uh, each week uh, you undertake work which will apply the knowledge that you're gaining inside the uh, your own organization uh, or which you imagine the application of in an organization that you know. Uh, this is supported by consultancy. Uh, as part of the program, you have an hour, a free hour of consultancy to uh, discuss uh, the challenges that you may be facing. Uh, we have weekly live sessions uh, with breakout discussions around the weekly topics. Those are recorded for people who can't attend them. Uh, there's a weekly asynchronous discussion on a discussion board. We have the industry case studies that I've referred to. Uh, and we have a final uh, integration project. So basically, we've included a number of elements that focus on the application of what you're learning and support the development of your understanding of that application. Uh, and that basically is you know, one of the fundamentals of the program design. Uh, this uh, is a picture of uh, one of our live sessions that we have every week. Uh, you, may, you won't see yourself there, obviously, because you are, are, are but you may imagine yourself as, uh, uh, as a participant in one of the weekly sessions. They're lots of fun. Uh, and uh, they allow us to uh, have a, an open discussion about the course topics. The industry case studies I referred to, these are some of the organizations. There are many more than this that, are, uh, that we feature in week four of the program. Uh, you can see the names of the people there. These videos are available on my YouTube channel. Uh, if any of you would like to go and take a look at them, uh, you can see interviews with people considering digital transformation in a range uh, of uh, organizations. I mentioned tools and techniques. We've developed uh, a number of tools and techniques of our own that uh, provide a simple framework for the application of the knowledge that you're gaining in the program inside your own organization. Uh, these are some examples of those. We also use uh, you know, tried and tested tools that we've brought from elsewhere, uh, but we have developed a number of our own that are featured uh, in the program. This is an example of one week uh, of the course. Uh, this is the week, week uh, six, I think, uh, on building a digital transformation roadmap. Uh, Basically, we introduce the design process. We talk about common roadmap elements. Uh, we uh, introduce a tool for development of the roadmap called the Milestone Matrix. We talk about different approaches to implementation, particularly predictive and agile approaches to managing a, a transformation project. Uh, we uh, emphasize the importance of integration and we provide a tool that helps you with the integration process, uh, the integration analysis matrix. We talk about managing implementation and we have an example case study uh, that you consider. And then you have an exercise that applies it in your own organization. The program also gives you access to the digital transformation simulation. Uh, I believe that Matt can share a link to this uh, in the uh, uh, in the chat for any of you that yeah. may wish to try it. It's based on a brake pad company in Toronto, a real company called NRS Brakes. They make really good brake pads. Uh, they've told me to tell you. I, I'm not an expert on brake pads, so I don't know how good, but they say they're really good. And uh, they were very kind to us in uh, allowing us to uh, work with them on the, to create the simulation. Uh, but we have this simulation. It's one of the tools that helps develop understanding of digital transformation. Uh, and then finally, uh, I do write a column. I guess it's called, I write articles uh, for a website called engineering.com. Uh, there is uh, a link to those there too. Thank you, uh, Matt. Uh, but uh, 
Right. For, and these cover a number of aspects of digital transformation that you may be interested in. So, you know, coming to as I'm coming to the end of my presentation, uh, being a professor, it's my job to give you work to do. So if you want reading homework reading, here is some homework reading that will help you consider these things further. Uh, so if you have any questions, we can discuss those. Uh, the program from the University of Waterloo comes from uh, its what speed uh, division, I guess. Uh, and you can get more information about them there. So uh, I think these, uh, and Matt has very helpfully uh, provided a link uh, to the digital transformation program page on the University of Waterloo website, which of course you're welcome to go to and uh, get more information and hopefully register. Our next program runs in October uh, and you know, the more the merrier. That is amazing. Um, thank you so much, Peter, uh, for, for sharing all of your insights and information here. Um, I think we'll just let a couple minutes here for some questions to flow in. I know I have uh, a few myself, um, but in the meantime, you know, you were talking about tools um, to assist during this time. And I think it's really important that individuals don't need to do this alone. There are so many resources and especially, you know, in Canada, the, the post-secondary institutions and higher education institutions here that we have are really cutting edge when it comes to research and development and innovation. And they're already starting to create so many tools. And I wanna highlight one from us and then we'll get into uh, any questions that have come throughout the time. Um, but eCampus Ontario, uh, where, where I'm working now, is uh, a not-for-profit organization that is uh, funded by the government of Ontario. And uh, we support colleges, and indigenous, indigenous institutes, and universities across the province. Um, we've really become a hub for educational innovation. And uh, one of the tools that we've recently developed uh, when it comes to innovation and research and development is the Ontario Collaborative Innovation Platform. So this platform here uh, is made, meant to be a matchmaking service that uh, enables um, collaborative innovation partnerships across the province. So that would be between higher education institutions uh, and the private sector. So any businesses looking to do some research and development. And, and as we heard just uh, now from Peter, you know, the idea of embracing technology is, is quite a, a troubling time because there, there's so much to focus on, be it AI, machine learning, um, and any sort of these resources that there are experts that currently uh, operate in it, much like Peter does. And, and the ability to connect with them is becoming uh, more and more accessible with uh, programs similar to the Ontario Collaborative Innovation Platform. So our platform here is really focused on innovation translation and finding the contacts within the province that will help and be best suited for your research project. Businesses can support um, by submitting innovation challenges to the platform and then they're matched with a, an expert at an institution that is willing and able to work with them on their business. Uh, there's also 80 different funding programs that are signed up uh, with this that provide funding to businesses who are submitting innovation challenges. Um, there are tools to get shred prepared uh, so that you can receive some money back for the research and development being done. And then there are great workforce training programs, similar to the program that uh, Peter has outlined here today. Um, we have a database on a library of uh, micro-credential programs across the province that have really been a one-stop shop for finding fast, affordable, and flexible online training to help upskill and, and acquire skills that employers need or to upskill individuals within your own organization. Um, it connects learners to industry-relevant training, uh, similar to this. And, and I think I'll pause on that note there, Peter. And I wanted to ask you, you know, you drew impacts on the first and fourth industrial revolutions and talked about the statistics about workforce resistance and unpreparedness. So with the ability and the resources available, do you think that it's a business's um, priority and, and almost um, their due diligence to offer these programs available to their employees and pay in part for them to make sure that they are upskilling their own employees to make sure that uh, organizations are able to adopt digital transformation a little bit easier? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I don't know whether it's a responsibility. Uh, I mean, in many ways, I think it is. I think organizations have social responsibilities and to contribute to the skills of their workforce, uh, I think is a good thing. But I, but I would actually more strongly argue 
uh, that is a, a commercial uh, uh, essential for them to do. Uh, they need to develop, they need to acquire the skills to be able to, uh, to digitally transform. And we know they can't rely simply on recruiting those. They, they need to be able to change the skills of the people they've got if they're going to be able to have access to the skills that they need to be able to conduct their own digital transformation. The other thing I might mention is that uh, many years ago, I, I applied for a job, which I didn't get, uh, for Ford uh, in the UK. They were looking for someone uh, to run their employee development program. And their belief at that time, which I very strongly share still today, was that by offering access to education of any kind to employees, uh, helped to develop the culture within the company and the uh, mindset as far as their employees was concerned uh, for innovation. It, it made them open to new ideas, helped them develop skills and have access to knowledge that was gonna be valuable for them uh, as they sought to change more quickly in the future. So uh, I'm a very strong believer that the organizations should and do need to uh, support more uh, training and education for their workers. Yeah, fair. And, and I think that that's increasingly more important, especially when looking at taking care of your own and the cost of rehiring and how uh, the labor shortage is really affecting a lot of businesses. Um, but, you know, on that same note, um, inputs are being tightened through inflation and, and interest rates. Um, so when companies look to free up the ability to focus more on increasing their inputs, let's say into innovation and research and development, um, so they can break free from some of their legacy programs and processes and maybe just um, ensure that they're treating their employees the best way possible to make sure that they're gaining the most out of the job. You know, how how do organizations really navigate it now um, to ensure that they're not over committing to new technology that aren't fully flushed out? Um, because they're not a large organization that can really um, take it, take that risk, let's say. Uh, so, so with that, what tools and processes do you think are best suited for businesses to adopt digital transformation, but not overcommit to it? The, it's a very interesting question, Matt. And I think what it comes from is this idea that organizations need to do the latest thing. Uh, it's like, you know, you've got to adopt the most uh, advanced technology, the latest thing that comes out, like having the latest iPhone or, you know, whatever the technology might be. And of course, if we just take a few seconds to think about that, that doesn't make that much sense from, from the point of view of most organizations. Uh, for most organizations, what you're looking at is what do we want to be like in the future? Uh, you know, what does the future hold for us? Uh, you know, what's our, how's our market likely to change? What are our products and services going to do? Taking time to carefully consider what the future is and then saying, okay, what are the capabilities that exist with technologies? And what is the best way for us to be able to uh, access those capabilities? Uh, either through and then I think you more easily come to a position which says, uh, okay, uh, we under we see this leading edge technology, uh, but really that isn't what we need today. We need what we need is something that does the things that we want to have done. So there is an emphasis, often marketed by the technology companies that says you need to have the latest, greatest thing. But what your question really says is, you know, do you really need to have that? Uh, and you you probably don't, but you, you come to that conclusion by understanding, uh, you know, what it really is you want to do with technology and what you need to do based on your understanding of your world. Amazing, yeah, so well put. Um, I'm sure that this conversation could go on for much longer, but uh, I'll give you uh, a chance to say any final thoughts as we round up the last 30 seconds here before we sign off, Peter. Yeah, main thing would be uh, if anybody does have anything they want to talk about further, 
uh, get in touch with me directly. You can see my email there on the screen now. And I'd be very happy to continue the discussion with any of you who may wish to get in touch. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate you uh, coming out here and sharing your wisdom with everyone. And I do appreciate everyone taking some time out of their day to join us on this webinar. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll sign off now, but if there are any questions whatsoever uh, about either program, please go ahead and reach out to either of us. And we're always happy to continue that conversation. Um, thank you all again and enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.